What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm trying out a brand new monthly series and that series is my top five favorite pickups from this month. In this case, it's August. So my top five favorite pickups from August 2019. Now the reason I'm doing a top five and not a top 10 is because I usually get between five and 10 pairs of sneakers and a lot of times if I get more, I only have about five that I'm really, really into. So as of right now, the plan is at the end of every month, I'm gonna be counting down my top five favorite pickups of that month and then of course, if I have more or less, I'll just make it my favorite pickups of that month. And because this is a new series, I'm still working out all the little kinks. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below, whether you like the way the video is currently, or whether there's some changes you'd like to suggest, anything like that, make sure to drop those comments. But without further ado, why don't we jump straight into things with an honorable mention. The Sean Witherspoon Air Max 197. So the reason this is an honorable mention and not a lot higher on the list is because I got this shoe on July 31st. So it doesn't technically count as one of my August pickups. But I like this shoe a lot. It's one of my grails and I just felt like it needed to be in this series because this is the first one. Gotta start things off strong. The Sean Witherspoon Air Max 197s dropped on my birthday of 2018. And ever since then, I've been trying to grab this shoe in my size. I've actually had this shoe before for a review in a size 10, which obviously didn't fit because they were on half a size big and I'm a size nine, so it was a size and a half big. But finally, over a year later, I was able to grab this pair of sneakers and it didn't disappoint. I absolutely love this shoe. The idea behind this shoe is that the more you wear it, the better it looks. And this full corduroy upper really starts to fray when you wear it in for a little while and it looks really, really great. I've only worn this shoe a handful of times, so there's not too many signs of wear. There's a little bit of creasing and some dirtiness on the outsole, but I've probably worn it more than a lot of the other sneakers in my collection, at least this month, and I've only had it for a month, so. I feel like this shoe is really gonna start showing some age in a little bit. One of my favorite things about the Sean Witherspoons is the colorway. I absolutely love this sort of California chill vibe look, and it's all colors that you wouldn't normally would think would go together, but they just look sick. It's got this sort of rainbow effect to it. Sean's inspiration for this shoe, in a nutshell, is that he wanted to create a shoe that had sort of a thrift store pre-owned vibe, and that's what he did with this corduroy. And he also wanted to give it sort of a 90s vibe, and that's very obvious in this colorway. Of course, if you didn't know, the reason this shoe is called the 197, is because the shoe is actually made up of two different Air Maxes, a one on the midsole and outsole, and a 97 on the upper. The Sean Witherspoons are not only one of my favorite pickups of the last month, but probably of the entire year. I just wanted this sneaker for so long, and now that I have it, it didn't disappoint. Number five, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. A few weeks ago, New Balance sent over the brand new Fuel Cell Rebel, and since I've had it, I've been wearing it a lot. This running sneaker is pretty unique because it has this midfoot outrigger which I've never really seen before in a running sneaker. Just because I haven't seen it before doesn't mean that I don't like it. I actually think it's a really nice detail and makes the shoe a little bit more stable than it would be if it didn't have it. But for me, the main reason that I've been wearing this shoe so often is because of the Fuel Cell midsole, which is surprisingly soft, but not unstable. I know the Fuel Cell Rebel is a running shoe, but to be honest, I've been wearing this almost every day. It's just a walk around shoe and I really enjoy it. The aesthetic is definitely performed performance driven and it's not really a head turner, but for an everyday sneaker, it's perfect. I think the colorway is fine because it's primarily gray and black, but you've got some pop with the greens, the reds, and the blues, and it's not really gonna stand out, but that's not what I'm looking for from this shoe. The one thing I'm not a huge fan of about this sneaker, and this could just be because my use case is a little bit different than like an everyday runner, and that's just the fact that it's so difficult to actually slide your foot into the shoe. So this definitely isn't a shoe that I can just slide on really quickly while I'm carrying something to walk outside. It's something that you really have to sit down on the couch and actually pull onto your foot before you can wear it. I know that seems like just such a tiny weird gripe, but it's actually something that's kind of bothered me. One of my favorite parts about this sneaker is how light it is. It's like ridiculously light. It's kind of crazy, but that's good for a running sneaker because you don't want to feel weighted down when you're running. I'm just really enjoying this sneaker and it's something that I'm probably going to rock as soon as I'm done filming this video because I'm going to go to Rite Aid, I think. Number four, the Adidas Yeezy 500 Bone White. The Yeezy 500 Bone White is a sneaker that I almost just called the blushes by accident. It looks just like every other Yeezy 500 except for the black pair. And if you haven't seen my review on this sneaker yet, make sure to check it out because I've left the link at the top of the screen. And speaking of that review, it's actually kind of funny because I used the thumbnail from the blush review as the thumbnail from the Bone White review. I just changed the name on the thumbnail and apparently no one noticed and I'm not sure if that's just because people don't care about my thumbnails or also the fact that this shoe looks exactly the same. Regardless, as of right now, this is my only pair of 500s and I really felt like I needed a pair in my collection, especially since I'm a sneaker reviewer. So that's why I'm keeping this pair. <laughs> 
It's not a great reason, but it's a reason. I do genuinely think that this is a very comfortable shoe. The upper is very well padded. The Adiprene midsole is pretty soft. It's not boost, but it's still pretty soft. Not only that, but the materials used on this shoe are also pretty solid. You've got some premium suede. You've got some actually surprisingly decent mesh, some leather accents, 3M piping. All around, it's a pretty well-made shoe. Now, of course, I still don't love the look. I still think it's a very bug like shoe. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to warm up to it or that I think it's a bad sneaker. I think it's a decent sneaker for the price and I'm pretty happy to finally have a pair to actually wear. I am however excited for Kanye to actually drop different colors of this shoe and not just cream white and black. I'd love to see really any color to be honest. It's a decent shoe. I think it's not the worst looking thing in the world and I'm happy to have it in my collection. Number three, the We Are Underdogs Blue Man Meraki 1. I just did an unboxing for this shoe a day before the Yeezy review, so if you'd like to check that out, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. But this shoe was really a surprise for me. I didn't expect to like it as much as I actually do. This shoe is a collaboration between the YouTuber Blue Man and also the brand We Are Underdogs. And right off the bat, you can probably tell that this is not the standard kind of shoe that I review on my channel. It's got more of a dressy look to it. In the unboxing for this shoe, I said this particular colorway really had some Louis Vuitton vibes to it, and I definitely stand by that. I think the color palette that they used on this sneaker and the overall aesthetic of this shoe, while simple, is very Louis. In my opinion, I don't actually own any Louis stuff, so it's just from the outside looking in. The aesthetic is super clean on this shoe. The materials that they used are excellent, a lot better than the leathers and suede that you see on every other mass-produced shoe. And I just think overall, it's a good looking sneaker. It might not be the most out there or eye-catching, but it's a great looking sneaker that's easy to rock to both formal and casual things. But my favorite part about this shoe is not actually the sneaker itself. While the sneaker does look great and I'm excited to wear it, I actually love the fact that this is a collaboration between a YouTuber and a real sneaker brand. You don't often see shoe collaborations that aren't with musicians or athletes, and it's really cool to see a creator like myself actually have a shoe come out, and it came out really well. I definitely suggest checking out Blue Man's channel if you're at all interested in men's fashion or men's style. He's got an awesome channel, he's a pretty big creator, and he's definitely worth checking out. And not only that, but also We Are Underdogs. They're a really cool Portuguese company that works with people like him, and also Nightwing. They've got a basketball sneaker coming out. Huge congratulations to Blue Man and We Are Underdogs. You guys killed it. This is an awesome shoe. Number two, the Air Jordan 1 Obsidian. This sneaker for me is one of the contenders for sneaker of the year. I don't think it's gonna win any awards, but I think it's one of the cleanest colorways on the Air Jordan 1 to drop in recent memory. I actually probably would put this shoe at the top of the list over top of the next sneaker, but because of the story behind that shoe, I can't really do that, but this is a shoe that I plan to wear the crap out of and really really enjoy it while I do it. The Air Jordan 1 Obsidian comes in sort of a UNC colorway and it's actually the leather version of a patent leather UNC Air Jordan 1 that came out earlier this year. As I'm sure you know, the Air Jordan 1 is my favorite shoe and this colorway on this high top version of this sneaker is just... It's awesome. It doesn't get much better than this. The sail leather panels on the shoe are all tumbled and have a very nice feel to them. The blue leather also feels pretty decent to the touch. And uh, it's just a shoe that goes with everything. Like I've worn this with a lot of different outfits and it's just worked. They've also updated the sock liner of this shoe too. It doesn't have that same sort of mesh that you usually have on the Air Jordan 1. Instead it has this sort of soft neoprene feeling material which I actually don't mind. I bought this shoe early on GOAT to drop a review which if you guys haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. But this shoe does drop on August 31st first and I'm not sure what quantities are gonna be like. It's definitely gonna sell out, but I'm not really sure how difficult it will be to grab this shoe. I don't expect it to be easy, but I don't expect it to be impossible. The Air Jordan 1 Obsidian is one of my favorite sneakers to drop this year, and while it's not anything crazy new or different, it's a really clean colorway and I just love the way it looks. Number one, my collaboration with Planters on the Crunch Force One. In all honesty, looks wise, I would pick the Air Jordan 1 Obsidians over these, no question, hands down. But this is my shoe, it kinda has to be at the top of the list. If you somehow missed all my videos on it and social posts on it, this is the Planters Crunch Force One, a shoe that I designed in collaboration with Planters. This shoe for me was kinda like a dream come true. It was my first actual sneaker that I designed that came to production, like people actually own this shoe. Granted it is a limited release, so it's only 1500 pairs, but it's a shoe that people are actually wearing, which is really crazy to think. Like I said, I designed this shoe in collaboration with Planters Peanuts, but there was also a lot of other people involved in the whole process. VaynerMedia was my direct point of contact, so huge thank you to them for giving me this opportunity. Richie Range and Garrison were the people who actually put this shoe together, so huge thank you to them. And of course, Mr. Peanut, who while he didn't say anything or uh, really talk to me at all, is just a cool dude, and the fact that he's on my shoe is something. 
My inspiration behind this shoe, besides the planter's theme and colorway, was retro basketball sneakers that used real leathers and real suede to create a sneaker that looked good both on and off the court. And I'm honestly blown away by the quality of materials used on this shoe. That's something that I never could have expected and I'm just so happy with the way it turned out. It's real quality leather, it's real quality suede, and it came together really, really well. Whether you like it or not, the Planters Crunch Force One is one of my favorite sneakers in my collection because I made it. So that's why, I mean, it's an obvious reason. And I'm honestly gonna rock the crap out of this shoe. It's gonna be nuts. Mm, still doesn't get any better. But that pretty much wraps up my top five favorite pickups for August 2019. And of course, I would love to know your thoughts on this series, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you have any suggestions. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.